when I finished my school and then did my college, I was I just couldn't get a job. I was looking around three partners. Mark Carthag, Peter Carthag, yes. Mark Carthag and the three were there. And and mind you, making money is not only not the successful part. It is what you have achieved as a businessman. That is what you mean to do. Far, which is a very big tragedy for our aviation sector as well as tourism sector. Hello and welcome to nepaltraveler.com. We are back again this week with an exciting episode of Nepal Travel Trade Talk. And joining me today is a very versatile, well-known, renowned, respected tourism entrepreneur, Mr. Bola Thapa. He used to be the he is the president of President Travels and that group of companies. He's also the consul of Bulgaria, as well as he was instrumental and involved in a number of travel associations with oh, a long and cherished full of achievements i think around four decades in the industry uh, it's a pleasure to have mr thapa on our show welcome sir thank you thank you terence very nice of your kind words <clears throat> well i've been in the trade for the last 40 years uh, i'm still at it and i hope to be another maybe five years the reason mainly is, uh, you know, is in this business, you can't uh, just walk out. It is so exciting and it's so addictive. challenging and addictive, addictive also. And uh, you just don't want to get, get out of this place. Of course, my son now takes, has taken over more or less 90% of the thing, but I still try and make sure that 10% is still me. Around. It's very difficult <laughs> to hang up our boots in tourism. <clears throat> yeah, yeah, yeah. But sir, to start with, maybe for our audience, how did it all begin? How did you choose a career in tourism? The early days, I mean, what led to that? Well, it's a very uh, funny story, I would say. Maybe funny and maybe... You see, I studied in Sanjeeva's Godavari. Unfortunately, I was never good in Nepali. Neither was I a good student also, frankly speaking. And uh, when I left, when I finished my school and then did my college, I was, I just couldn't get a job. I was looking around trying to get a job because the government job was out of question for me. I couldn't speak Nepali or write Nepali. So the best thing was to go to a, do a job which would, I would just get, give a lot of bullshit. You know, I mean, trying to get away with uh, the whatever, gift of the gap. Yeah, give it to the gap. So then finally I got into a agency, which was any travels those days. Worked there for 18 months and uh, that's how I got into travel trade. And that went on till today. So I worked for a couple of companies, AJ Travels, then I went to Annapur Travels, then I came to President Travels. Uh, there, in between, I was also running Greater Wildlife Camp. Okay. I was also running a resort. My, my view was to learn as much as possible and learn everything. Anything that I, that, that comes in the way I want to learn. I, when I was working for Annapur Travels, I used to do a, go for accounting, cargo, tour, everything. So I had a, a reasonable idea of the tourism sector. And then when I came to uh, President Travels, where we were three partners, Mark Carthag, Peter Carthag, yes. Mark Carthag and me, we three were there. And unfortunately, I got sick. I was in Delhi for about three months. By the time I came back, my partners were not so happy due to the sales and marketing. So they said, okay, I, we are leaving, you take over. So I took it over after that and um, we're doing all the right. Rest is history. Yeah. yeah. So we're doing all right. So that's how my travel trade started. And looking back <clears> at the <throat> early years, sir, how do you see that uh, travel tour business back then as compared to now? What has changed? Well, those days you really had to work for it. I remember those days when I used to take a ABC, a call, the book and a air tariff and make itineraries 
I used to go to foreign ministry. There I was. I used to make items. You know, each sector by sector, then do do the calculations of the mileage and the cost. It was quite a quite a thing. But one thing is good. Now I know. I've learned the ticketing. I know what uh, how to do it, even if there was no computer. But anyway, now what has happened is things have changed totally. One click, and okay. you get everything. And that gives you. Efficiency and uh, fast movement, but people don't learn so much. If you ask them what is mileage, they won't know because we, we were we know exactly from Kathmandu, Delhi, how much mileage there is, or Calcutta, you know that type of thing. We, we used to go through all these things. So it is experience which I have, and a lot of people are my uh, colleagues have with these younger guys. Mostly mm-hmm. don't have because the computer. Tech related. Yeah, the tech has taken over the whole system, and uh, or they all depend on it. <coughs> Excuse me. And I remember that those days, I knew the telephone numbers by heart, and even uh, mathematics. Now to add two plus two, maybe I need a mobile uh, calculating machine. Yeah. Is that bad? So dependent on the on these uh, machines that. It has become quite annoying at times, you know. But then that's we have to, you know, go along with it if you want to survive. And uh, now we are more or less computerized, and uh, it's a lot of fun. And to start with, uh, as an entrepreneur, precedent travels that you mentioned. Uh, how was that? That that jump, you know, from working for other people and then starting your own. And what were your vision, or what did you think I should achieve this? No, you see, I used to work well, that one of the time I was working for Everest Express, and Everest Express I was taken as one of the promoter. Uh, they had told me that you know you would be sort of thing, but unfortunately they did not uh, give me what I was supposed to be given. But then anyway, then I thought that uh, uh, you know I've been working for them and you know doing all the business and all that stuff. Sort of then one day, uh, Doctor Bob Fleming. He was a he's a expert on birds of Nepal. He used to die. His father wrote a book of birds of Nepal, and uh, he was one of my very close friend and as a matter of mentor. And he came and said, "Bola, what are you doing? Why don't you open a own? Why don't you start a own? You you need to take that challenge." I told him, "I'm sorry, I don't know. I don't have the money." He said, "It's not the money. It's your ability to be able to run the company." So. That's how I went into president travels. As a matter of fact, I had not even a single penny that time, and we all three did not have that money. But we toiled and worked, and things got better. So I personally feel uh, you have to be able to take the challenge in every business. There is a certain risk involved in it, but then you have to you have to really dedicate yourself if you want to be successful, because. Uh, Success doesn't come easy, as a lot of people think it is. And mind you, making money is not only not the success part; it is what you have achieved as a businessman. That is what the main thing is. I mean, people get money and earn money in many ways, exactly. but it's the way it's you big. can come up with uh, hard work and be able to do something which other people may not be able to do. And President <coughs> Travels itself actually was a well-known company because I think you were also involved with airlines as a GSA and uh, Euro Rail and uh, also doing outbound. Would you like to share some thoughts on that part of it? Yeah, actually, uh, frankly speaking, I've been lucky. I've, I've had friends who have supported me. I was not. I was never a tour man. I had no idea what tour was about. So I had a friend called Mr. John Meir. Uh, who is from uh, India, and he he used to do this uh, tour business, and he said, uh, "You keep on at it. I will teach you. I will, I will push you." And I will, and that is how we did tour. Then the ticketing came in. No, I mean the, what we call uh, uh, luck also has to be there. You know, hard work only doesn't count. It is your luck and your dedication, and uh, 
Fortunately, I was able to do in my life. There were a lot of friends who supported me, who pushed me to do this thing. And then, our own Nepali ma banai sa. Ek nava ko sarpora big. Sorry, big nava ko sarpora. Ek nava ko manchi kam lagde na bandi. I had the problem there because you see, if, you, if uh, going back to my family, I was from a mid family. I was not a rich family. My wife, uh, by that time, she was my girlfriend. She was from a very rich family, and naturally, in those days, if you are not rich, you are. It's a tough competition. And then uh, I said, I must do something, be something. So that also was one of the reason why I toiled hard. Pushed yourself further. Yeah, yeah yes. to make myself successful. Uh, you've also been involved in a leadership role in a number of uh, travel trade associations. NATO, I think, uh, Skull, very recently you were the immediate yes. past president. How do you see the role of these associations and your <clears throat> uh, participation in them? And no, actually, these associations are very important for any any business in the sense. Nata was I was a president, and it was very important for us because to be able to put these things up to the government, you needed a association. See, individual cannot yeah. work, so you need a association to back you up. And when I became Nata president, of before there were others also, we tried our best to go to the government, try and solve the problem. Because things happen when there is an association behind you. And that was one of the reason. Well, Skoll also, I was the president for almost eight years because finally, Mr. Pandey, I wanted to hand it over to the younger generation. So Mr. Pandey took over Skoll, and uh, I had been into a <coughs> few associations. It is interesting. I went there. I even was in Pata for quite a time. Uh, but what happened was, at that very time, the government appointed me. As a, as a board of member in the civil aviation, so there was a time where I would not be able to give time to Pata. So, association is also very important for those business community, and uh, it it brings it brings you uh, limelight to to the government so that you can sometimes you have more bargaining power. Yeah, so bargaining power and all that sort of things. <coughs> So how do you see the associations today? Do you think that all the associations are on the same page? Or the common complaint sometimes is, you know, we are in different uh, political appointees and the main picture of tourism, the common goal yeah. perhaps is being lost. Yeah, that is a very fortunate part because you see the government or anybody will always try to, uh, try to, you know, have their people there. Have their, not have their people, it's just that if, the, if let's say Nata and Pata, or for that matter, Tan, the government can play. If we all turn into one, it can be a Nata, it can be a Tan, whatever it is, but when we go to the government, it should be one voice. One voice. And that's uh, where the government can play. You'll do something for the Tan, maybe, and or correct. for the Nato, but will waylaid you towards Nato. So it is very important that. These associations stick together and try to do the best for the for the tourism sector. Now we d did bring in Nepal Tourism Board. Unfortunately, that was politicized. Is what I say. Uh, that's very unfortunate part of us. But I don't blame the government. I blame us because we are the ones who let that happen. So you know we are equally at blame with the with the uh, government because uh, we saw the way to the government how you can do it. So that's why it is a, I'm hoping that Nepal Tourism Board will come out of those Situation. messy things and become a much more stronger uh, uh, marketing device. So you were also appointed as you just mentioned uh, and you were involved with the civil aviation. I, I think it was during those promotional years they were trying to promote more tourism. Right now, I think civil aviation in the recent last few days, there's been another air crash. And now suddenly there's a loud voice for bifurcation of civil aviation. What are your views on that? Well, you see, actually, regarding civil aviation, unfortunately, yes, we have had 
13 crashes so far, which is a very big tragedy for our aviation sector as well as tourism sector. And uh, the government wants to bifurcate that, by uh, do this uh, separation. Uh, separation. But uh, they are trying to do it. There are certain people who don't want it, some people, certain people who want it. So the day will come when this will go into streamline is what I look for. Because you see, there are, we have to look at the positive side and not on the negative side. Uh, we have still got a uh, lot of things to learn. Uh, and uh, the main reason for, uh, for these crashes are not due to them itself, but it is because maybe the security reasons, safety reasons and things like that. So let's hope that things will get better and uh, civil aviation will be able to uh, streamline these things so that we can have air, our airlines, national carrier going to Europe and things like that. So you've also gone further and expanded the president uh, group of companies. I believe you also now in hospitality, you have uh, some properties also that you've started out with. Yes, uh, we have a resort uh, called Green Valley Get the, the Resort. Uh, well, you see, actually, uh, I I was also a board member of a Solti for a time. As I said, I also used to run Greater Wildlife once upon a time. Uh, so I always liked that also. But then I did not, uh, I'm not really a hotelier, so, you know, so I had to learn the way. So I opened this, or rather start building this slowly. It took me almost eight, nine years to do it. I was I was doing it very slowly, taking my time. And now we are lucky that we have about 35 rooms and uh, quite a big ground for uh, entertainment and things like that. So we're also making another one in Dhulikhen. Also, there because I have some property which I had bought long time back, which in the view that I would one day build a hotel. Uh, the one that in Pal Palanchok is where I wanted to do uh, Climatization before going flying to Lukla or flying higher, they would stop in this Palacho, which is a which has a very beautiful view, and then onward. But uh, well, you know, for me, time to step down and let my son run it because you should not do everything. My policy is again, you should make them also learn. And I've been lucky because I've only got one son and he's doing a good job. I'm sure he'll be able to take over and do better than what I did. So, sir, with your son taking over and the newer generation, what would be your plans? What would you be more involved with in, in an advisory role, perhaps more with all, all associations, more into? Well, you see, I'm going to be the dean for the honorary concert next year. I'm the vice dean now, this year. And I will, I will be focusing more on social and more on things that I can be able to do because now my money making part is finished. Now my mind is to the service to the people to do better things to make way for to go to heaven. <laughs> As they call it, you know. So let's see. Uh, I'm a sort of a workaholic, unfortunately. I have to go to the office. I get bored very fast if I stay home. So my habit is working and I love to work and I like challenges. My main uh, is I like to take new challenges. I want to do things. I may fail, but I've been lucky uh, so far. So I always love to take more challenges. Maybe till I can do, I will still do. Just so as the consul for Bulgaria, what, where do you see your role and what are you active with promotion, especially in the European market where, you know, Nepal somehow has some kind of image problems in terms of our yeah. aviation safety and other things. Uh, you've also been involved, I think, with the European Economic Forum and stuff like yes, that. Yes. So, and it does all that learning, will that be? Yeah, I was also somewhere? with them when Mr. Uh, Deep Bunny was the president, I was the vice president. And uh, that's where I learned what uh, you could get uh, finance as well as do projects. Uh, but it fizzled out because Deep, uh, sorry, Deep Bunny is also very, very aggressive and a very good man who would do, try to do something for the country. 
As for being an honorary consulate, our job mainly is to look after the Bulgarians who come here and have problems. But we have been trying to uh, do more bilateral things. I have been, uh, the government has now appointed me also a brand ambassador for Bulgaria, uh, in which I personally feel that it is, it is all right, but I feel that it is not the right thing because I live in Nepal. I don't live in Bulgaria. So I am at the moment trying to get Someone. somebody who loves Nepal, who will be able to promote Bulgaria. We, we do get a lot of trekking people coming here and uh, uh, get somebody there who will promote more as it has become a uh, Shenzhen now. Uh, Europe does play a quite an uh, important role for, for us to bring tourism. So there is avenues for you to enhance possibility of more tourism from Europe. Yes, yes. It is uh, always there every, for everybody. You remember well, those days when uh, NDP was not there, we were the one who used to go to World Trial Mart. We were the one who went to Berlin. We did ourselves, we paid ourselves. Well, that's how we did. Uh, we brought in, we learned it. It was trial and error. It was, uh, we didn't have the money. And the first time we went to World Trail Mart, we all chipped in 50 pounds each. And yeah. uh, didn't, we didn't have a stall, but we had As a some marketing uh, thing. Yeah. So it was, it was nice actually. And uh, I remember those days where um, it was a challenge because uh, those days tourism was good because if you could, you could, could make good money when the tourist came in. Uh, because there was no price war. These days, prices have been so competitive that now we have to not only compete between each other, we have to compete with country also. Exactly. There everybody wants, Malaysia wants, Thailand wants, everybody wants the business. So we have to compete with them, not only with our country. Mm -hmm. So mainly what we need to do is we need to go into the world with uh, as a Nepal, as Nepal as a whole, then everybody will get a piece of cake. So as a final question, for the younger generation who are more digitally marketing and stuff, what would be your advice to them in terms of, I mean, you've seen it all over four decades from fighting for the market to promoting Nepal, trying to get our share of the market. What would be your advice to younger tour operators and people in tourism? No, my only advice is, uh, well, Work with dedication, number one, and try to learn. There are a lot of things that we do not know till now. The younger generations should try to dedicate themselves to what they are doing. You know, they should be focused on what they are doing rather than they want to do this or that or whatever it is. So the younger generation, no, they are doing quite well also. It's not that they are not doing well. They are doing well, but we need to go more than what we are doing. So the younger generation must be more dedicated to what we are doing and do the best we can. Thank you so much, sir, for your kind words and for coming. Thank by you. Today. Thank you Thank for you giving so me a chance to be able to uh, give my little bit thoughts because uh, tourism is something where we share. That is very important to share the ideas and uh, give each other the advice that we can give.